Should photography stay your passion or should you make it your business? There's a young guy who I had a conversation with recently and he had a lot of questions and that's kind of what sparked this thought because I've seen a lot of people come and go in the creative space over the past six years of doing photography and videography. And so it made me ask the question, who is this career for and when should they make it a business rather than just keep it a passion? I'm gonna share with you the three major things that I think somebody should be thinking about before they go and turn their passion to profit. First, before anything, you need to look at your personality type. I really believe that entrepreneurship is a fantastic career path, but I don't believe that it's for everybody. A lot of people looking to start are really excited about the creative work and the process of shooting really cool things, but they completely forget the other 80%, which is you're starting a business. Landing clients, learning pricing, doing taxes, drafting invoices, marketing your services, the list goes on and on. The whole business side of the creative career was something I completely underestimated when I was starting my photography and videography journey. But the reason why I didn't quit versus a lot of people that I know did quit was ultimately my resiliency to hustle and just not give up. I sat down and talked to a lot of different creatives and one of the key characteristics that they have is a confidence in themselves and a belief that no matter what happens, they're gonna figure it out. Before even beginning as a videographer, I was dealing with a lot of really big health issues as I developed an autoimmune disease and that kept me from working for two whole years. And at the end of that two years where I started to find my love for videography, I had used all my savings just to survive and I didn't have any money to even buy a laptop. I didn't have any money to buy camera gear, but I knew deep down that this is what I was supposed to be doing because it just created a fire in me and I had this confidence that I could make this a career path. And so I just found a way and I was able to thankfully get a loan for $16,000. Seems like a lot of money and it was for sure, but I knew that this was going to be something that wouldn't just be a passing thing. I knew that I was so confident that this is what I was meant to be doing and I went all in on that. And when I started to share that this is what I wanted to do, I had a lot of people discouraging me because I had no prior evidence that I could do this. But my personality type is one that fights and finds a way and I wanted to be the boss of my own life. There was a really interesting article that I recently read from Business Insider and they shared the 15 characteristics that would cause an entrepreneur to fail. But for this video, I'm just gonna share the four main characteristics that I thought were really interesting just to highlight my point further. The failing entrepreneurs make excuses, they hesitate to make decisions, they're lazy, and they don't have a clear vision. It's a good thing to evaluate yourself and look at your good characteristics and say, okay, is this gonna propel me in my future entrepreneurship or would this be a hindrance? On the positive side, if I had to look at the characteristics that further my career, it'd be things like, I have discipline, I'm determined, I'm willing to learn, I have a vision for where I wanna go, I'm good at having conversation, and I genuinely care about people. These are only a few of the personality types, but when I look back on younger me who is just starting a business, I can look at these things and say, yeah, that really helped to further my career and it helped me get to where I am today. I think it's really good to look at your personality traits, see where you're strong, and maybe where you might struggle in a business. You might be really great in your creative field, but you might struggle to talk to people. So maybe a path for you would be working on a company that allows you just to do the creative. This is one of the pieces that's definitely overlooked because it's more of an internal analysis rather than outward metrics. But take the time, get to know yourself, look at what you're strong in. And your weaknesses aren't a bad thing. It just might show you exactly where you need to go and what you should be doing. The second thing to look at is what is the market demand? Practically, I break this down by answering two questions. First is who do I serve? And second, how can I do it in a way that's unique and can also bring me money? Let's break it down a little bit more though. First to know who you wanna serve, you need to figure out what are you most passionate about? I believe just like with anything, if you're chasing money, you're gonna to get to a point where you burn out and you hate what you do. That's why looking at what you're most passionate about will guide you to your next steps and help you figure out your own uniqueness and market fit. Let's say for example, you're passionate about hunting. Instead of trying to be everything for every client and having a sporadic portfolio like I did from the start, you're gonna take every single opportunity to get out, take photos and videos of anything that has to do with hunting. You're gonna share that media on your website, your social media platforms, and just get the word out there that this is what you do now and this is your field of expertise. In the meantime, obviously you still have to pay the bills, so it's good to try and get your name out there and network in your local community so that you can try and get some of those video projects. But those projects should stay separate from your social media and your website. So now when you have the social proof that this is what you do, you'll have so much more confidence going to a business because you'll have a stack of work a portfolio where you can say, hey, this is what I shoot, I'm right up your alley, and they're gonna have confidence to hire you because you're now the specialist. This is actually a real world example from my buddy, Alex Coat. This is all of his media, and this is exactly the path that he took. He grew up with a passion for the outdoors, and he grew his skills over the years and had a vision for where he wanted to go and the brands he wanted to work with, 
and now he's really successful in the outdoor industry. I believe that when you really dive into what you're passionate about, that is going to be the key separator between you and everybody else who's just trying to get into that niche because of the cool factor. But like with anything, there's going to be competition. So you need to be able to push through the grind of trying to build a portfolio, trying to get recognized, trying to reach out to companies. There's just so much grit that needs to come from pursuing what you're passionate about. But ultimately, when you create such a portfolio that stands out from everybody else's, that's when these types of companies will start to say, Yes. So figuring out who you serve based on what you're most passionate about leads me into the second question. How can I do this in a way that's unique? Your own uniqueness usually comes from the origin of where your passion started. For me, I grew up watching Nitro Circus and Travis Pastrana, and I always wanted to be a stunt rider like him. So when I started my photography and videography journey, it almost became an obsession for me to find the people within the power sports space because it really fired me up. By seeking out every opportunity to chase the dream, I started collaborating with different athletes, building up a portfolio, and soon enough, those opportunities started to come in because that was my field of expertise. And then to add to that uniqueness, I also approached my photography from more of a commercial standpoint. That side of my uniqueness came from a four-year career in modeling and so I was really drawn to that commercial look and having those really crafted looks. My own personal uniqueness and story has helped me craft my own style which has helped me expand my network and also opened up doors. I know not everybody is going to agree with me that having a niche is really important but I feel like you have more credibility when you approach a brand and you have a specialty that aligns with them. The third thing to address is the financial consideration. Starting out in the creative industry can be a really difficult thing because just like with any other business you're building up your reputation your name your portfolio so that people can look at that and say this guy or girl does good work there's something that a business person told me when I was just starting my business and it really comforted me and I think would also be some encouragement for you as well they said that it roughly takes about five years to stabilize a business and then see profit now I don't know if this is accurate but it did give me a lot of comfort because I didn't feel like I had to be so hard on myself for the years where I was learning and growing and just trying to understand business now that being said can you turn a profitable business under five years of course you can. But when it comes to learning the pathway of entrepreneurship mixed with learning your craft of photography or videography, it is going to take a little bit of time to start seeing that flow of clients. There's a few key topics that I think would be really good for me to touch on that you should consider when it comes to the financial aspect. So first, you're really going to have to be sensitive to budgeting. When you're starting your business, it's so easy to fall into the trap of thinking that you need the latest and greatest gear. It's definitely important to have the right tools for the job, but it's good to evaluate where you're currently at in your skill level. And then ask yourself, does this gear make sense for where I am right now? For me personally, trying to avoid those constant gear purchases, which add up over time, I generally like to look for gear that's going to future proof me for the next four to five years. And the awesome thing about starting now is most of the gear is going to provide you that because they have really high megapixel sensors and if you want to get into video they have really high specs in terms of video capabilities. I think it's good to be buying the gear for the job that you're going to be doing right now and then if you're getting hired out for other jobs maybe start renting and then if that's a reoccurring thing then go and buy for that specific job. It's just going to ensure that that gear can be paid off. I say all of that because in the creative field there's such an ebb and flow of work from month to month. Some months you'll be slammed with work and then others you're going to be wondering if everybody lost your number. No, I couldn't get anybody. It's really good to be smart and trying to lay aside money where you can live for at least a month or two, even if you don't get any jobs. I think this is why a lot of photographers and videographers will say have at least six months set aside just for living costs because it's really hard to determine your flow of work and how many jobs you're going to be getting from month to month. So having a budget means that we're actually making some money. So let's talk about revenue streams. The industries that people like to talk about the most is real estate, weddings, and even family shoots. But like I said before, even when you're building up your portfolio and reputation, it's still going to be really spotty work. When I started out, I thought, oh yeah, I'm just going to shoot weddings and that's going to be what pays the bills. But honestly, I hated shooting weddings. Thankfully, I started to get a lot more corporate jobs, which I actually enjoyed a lot more because it allowed me to be a lot more creative and it also had a better payoff. Like I said before though, do what you need to do to pay the bills and then start creating for your passion. The revenue streams when it comes to photography have really been chopped down. For example, before people would sell stock images, prints, photo books, and magazine features. And you can still make money with those things, but the market has drastically declined. I personally think the best way to make money nowadays is by working with clients, creating for social media, their website, and products. Everybody wants to grow their social media following and needs more social media content, so I think that this is a really great way to earn income. But no matter what industry you're in, there are going to be periods where there is a dry spell, so you want to be really good with your money. So after evaluating these three things, I hope that it's given you more drive to pursue this passion and make this passion a business. If there's things that you feel like I missed in this video or you 
you'd like me to talk about in another video, leave that in the comments below. If you're looking to take your photography to the next level, I think you'll really enjoy this channel, so be sure to subscribe. All right, I'll catch you in the next video. Peace.